Hello, my name is Robert Mitchell, and today Electric Pages is here at Embedded World 2024 in Nuremberg, and I'm at the Arm stand, and I'm joined by Paul from Arm. Good to see you. How are you doing? Fantastic. I'm very well. Thank you very much. So, my first question to you before we get into all of this is tell the audience a bit about yourself and what you do at Arm. So I'm Paul Williamson. I'm the general manager of the IoT business at Arm. So look after all of these embedded devices that we're seeing here at Embedded World. Fantastic. So we've got a couple of bit of uh, hardware here. Yes. Could you tell me what's going on? So at the show today, we're launching our latest generation of AI accelerator for edge devices. Right. So what you're seeing here is our last generation, which was our Ethos U55 and our latest generation, the new product, the Ethos U85. They're running on uh, FPGAs so that this is the next generation of technology that we will see in microcontrollers and chipsets from our major silicon vendors next year in 2025. Wait. The FPGAs? Yes. So before the technology is available in end product in silicon from companies like Infineon, we have to provide that IP and that technology for them to develop with. And so running on an FPGA allows us to simulate and demonstrate the performance oh, of the technology. Oh, that's fantastic. So, so, so obviously the actual chip itself hasn't been fabricated yet, but this, is like, right. this, this is like the hardware um, kind of like simulation of how it's going to that's work. That's exactly right. Yeah. So this is a early demonstrator of what we can expect from next year's technology. That's fantastic. So what, what FPGA are we looking at here then at the moment? I, I am actually not sure what the <laughs> underlying <laughs> FPGA is. So I, can, I wouldn't be able to tell you. If it's a neural accelerator, I'm kind of yeah. thinking that's going to need a lot of juice. Use. Right. In, yeah, terms yeah. Of like, in terms of like the number of logic circuits you're going well, to need. Well, so. this is an embedded um, accelerator, so mm. it's designed to run in sort of these uh, very low power embedded devices. Course, so things like doorbell cameras, anything that would yeah. be a normal microcontroller. So a standard uh, FPGA platform will have plenty of juice to handle something uh, of this sort of performance oh, yeah. level. Um, but the, so, trick, but the trick is going to be to take that design, shrink it down and put it into a piece of silicon with your arm core on the that's side. That's right. So we, yeah. and to do that, we offer something called our Core Stone 320, which is a reference design to our partners. So they don't just get the accelerator IP. They also get a reference system that includes the microcontroller and an image signal processor for processing the front end camera signal mm -hmm. so that they can run real world systems up into silicon as quickly as possible. That's absolutely fantastic. So. I think one thing I'd like to know is what I don't I can't remember if you said or not. Um, what kind of energy dissipation are we talking about if this thing was to be integrated into uh, silicon? Yeah, so um, it's very dependent on the implementation of the technology, but we're down at the sort of uh, microwatt level for these kind of platforms. They're running on, uh, you know, sorry, even... mi microwatt for an yeah. accelerator. So these are running even on battery powered doorbell cameras, that kind of technology, but they can still do stuff like uh, people detection and live image processing. What? And so micro watts. Absolutely. So the, the platform here is running, um, as you can see, and doing image classification. So if we uh, change the image here, uh, the, the device will quickly sort of classify that that's a bird and change the uh, classification of the image. So if I flip back, you'll see it sort of um, drop back and down here while this isn't running in real time you can see the duration taken for the inference uh, it's in milliseconds so that's 1.6 milliseconds on the current generation if you come back to the previous generation the same inference was taking around 13 milliseconds so moving from the u55 generation to the u65 there's a 10x improvement in the performance of the device honestly i'm a bit speechless actually that's Oh, and what year did this one come out? So actually silicon with this device, the U55 is just launching at the moment. So um, we're actually seeing platforms from companies like so, Aleaf and so on. So you've already got a piece of hardware you've designed and you've yeah. got that performance and then suddenly you've made it. 10 X improvement in performance. How? So there's a number of things <laughs> that come into this. One of the big factors of that is um, a change in, in the world of AI. So right. um, if you've sort of seen chat GPT and, and all these I, I heavily I heavily work. I'm actually trying to do my own models at the moment. Oh, so very I, good. I, okay. I, I, funny enough, I actually bought a couple of those Tesla K80s and I found out I can't use any of them because they don't work with the current uh, versions of PyTorch. I'm oh, banging, interesting. My, banging my head against the wall. This the is moment. exactly <laughs> the challenge that everyone's facing. So yeah. the frameworks are changing, the models are they changing. Are, yeah. And one of the big innovations has been the move from convolutional neural networks into mm. transformer models, right. where which 
which yeah. are the technologies behind things like large language models. Yeah. And this hardware is designed specifically to support in hardware the acceleration of transformer models. And that's one of the key elements of how we're able to get that 10x improvement in these kind of algorithms, because we we directly accelerate the uh, matrix by matrix accelerations mm. that are needed for the key framework. And so, and so, like you say, even though the let's say the let's say you take a, a typical GPU, even though that would have more power for inference, what you're talking about is that thing would be like 300, 200 watts. Yeah. This thing is microwatts sitting on a, a, on a tiny piece of silicon with a small arm core, lasting on a battery for like 10 years. I imagine if it's well, a doorbell, yeah, for example. Yeah, exactly. And so. What you're seeing, you know, some of the early applications of the U55, mm. the previous generation, were things like um, face detection for wake up of your laptop or something yeah. like that. But with the newer generation and the improvement in performance, it's now being applied for real time video. So you're using it in. Um, I, was about, I was about to say, because if it's 13 milliseconds, yeah, uh, that's going to be about 50 frames per it's sec. Still, yeah, it, it all depends on um, really the. You, you the can size of the these, image and everything yeah, else. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's a range a huge of image, it's gonna, parameters gonna, it's to work across. Reduce, yeah. yeah. So, but but even with a 10, 10 times uh, improvement, yeah. that means that you can then make your image larger to absolutely. get the same performance. So you can be getting high resolution images. Therefore, you can get better quality yeah, so experience. You can make your own choices around absolutely. the uh, trade-offs between the two. But it means we'll see it in new applications. So we're seeing the higher performance mm. needed for things like uh, industrial applications, like yeah. uh, production line inspection or. Um, even in things like, um, you know, the, the, the things that are understood are things like security cameras for people detection, mm. but you can now run algorithms that are more advanced and they can say, yes, it's trees blowing in the wind or it's a dog rather than, you know, there's an event here that you need to worry about. Or in that case, my dog who doesn't understand the difference between someone breaking in and, and, a, tr and a leaf in the wind. That's so right. yeah, yeah. it's easy more clever than my dog. So yeah. that definitely makes sense. Um, so sort of going in the next few years, I say five years in the future, where do you see this kind of technology going? Yeah, so we, you know, it's relatively early days. As you point out, yeah. the software frameworks are changing. Still changing. And, um, you know, one of the big focuses for us is uh, bringing together, ARM focuses very much on that software ecosystem. So making yeah. sure that you can take hardware from different vendors, but use a common tool chain like PyTorch. Yeah. And we're working with um, Meta on extensions to PyTorch uh, around a platform called ExecuTorch, which helps you more quickly move your model from you know, a large model down into an embedded platform like this. And so we think that the combination that ARM brings in bringing that software ecosystem together and our silicon partners who will bring these sort of uh, chips based on this platform to life will mean there's just going to be a much more open ecosystem for people to innovate and create their own products based on this technology. I just feel like it's a bit of a shame that you guys don't make your own chips. You know, because you, you're, you're, you're just like, because it'd be nice if you had to get something like that directly instead of having to rely on some of the manufacturer to put it into their design. But I suppose the point is, it, well, actually, here's a good question. This kind of uh, concept, you know, not, not a concept, you know, the, the hardware simulation. Right. Um, is that, so I think you said it wasn't, is that real time or is that kind of like slow down to show how fast it could so be? The, the, um, so we aren't running in real time on this demo. In um, what we also offer to try and help with that for software developers, mm -hmm. we offer something called ARM virtual hardware. So oh, right. because the instruction architecture is similar between the edge device with arm and the cloud yeah we're able to run a full simulation of that end device in the cloud on a virtual hardware and it means that a software developer can actually work against that and get real-time performance statistics just without any hardware on their desk at all now that's, um, that's interesting because we've seen i've seen this happen with a number of different um uh companies where it's this concept of hardware as a service. Yeah. And I, it, it kind of feels like that that might be where you might be going towards. So for example, I could envision quite a number of these in a server rack, for example, right. and then you can remotely tap into something like that and then start to work with them remotely yeah. as, a, as, something, as something you hire so you can simulate and practice with it. Yeah, and, and that could be an option. But in our case, what we're doing is sort of abstracting completely from needing a specific targeted hardware rack. Yeah. And it just runs on AWS in the cloud. So if you oh, take impressive. our tooling, such as Arm Kyle, we have Arm Virtual Hardware instances, oh. and you can just directly target those and simulate within your software. And, and I suspect in that case, because you, you've got access to the um, um, server racks, you can have, you can have high end GPUs, you can then run, run it probably faster. So it's easier to test it yeah. compared to something that might be slower. Well, potentially, I mean, with, with the architecture being consistent with um, ARM based servers in the cloud on AWS and mm. these being ARM devices at the edge, we can actually, we don't need dedicated GPUs to get very high performance. Because if you imagine a, a server rack, this is sort of multi gigahertz Linux environment. Mm. Uh, and so 
simulating an embedded microcontroller platform is very straightforward. It's quite straightforward. Yeah. Oh, but I thought that the uh, the actual inference on that would be harder to simulate on a It traditional... does require a specific model of that accelerator so that we can yeah. measure the level of performance of the say, accelerator. Cause, because cause obviously, obviously uh, any, uh, most, most most model computers can simulate any microcontroller, but, That's but, right. but the inference engine itself is, is, is it's inherently very different to a typical processor, so it has to be simulated differently, I, it, I suspect. Somewhat, yes. And yeah. So we do have a, a software model for the accelerator itself. And, and I also wonder, for engineers who are interested in working with this kind of hardware, is it possible for them to get their own development boards or their own FPGAs to actually simulate this stuff? Yeah, so, so if you take the current generation, um, <clears throat> there's a company called Hymax who are demonstrating, we can show you, mm. uh, and they have a um, Seed Studio based uh, developer board, uh, which actually one of our demos here puts it onto an Arduino based carrier with a display oh, and a little camera and you can use it directly. Um, and similarly, we're seeing a lot of people you know, if we step back from the accelerators that are available today, and you know, you talked about looking at large language mm. models, we're seeing a lot of people experimenting on common platforms like Raspberry Pi and Arduino as well. Mm. Um, because it is that common R microcontroller and tool chain, yeah. you'll then, then be able to be prepared for this in the future. And so, and I, and, and I think it's interesting as well that um, ARM, because obviously, obviously your, your history is uh, a risk, right, you know, microcontrollers and stuff. Yeah. So, and it's interesting to see that you're going towards the inference engines as well, because you've got people like NVIDIA and, and who obviously dominates the market in, in that area. And so it's nice to see that um, the, the engineers are going to finally be able to have other options than just NVIDIA and nobody else, I right. think, which I think, is, I think would be fair to say. Okay. I mean, we, um, you know, in this case, it's very much a... But it is embedded. Embedded I, I, I appreciate it. It's not going to replace your server mm -hmm. app, but, it, no, no. But, but it's nice to know that we get, we're, engineers are getting more choice in how they, get, how they can run their inferences on Absolutely. the edge. Absolutely. And, and it's broadening the application. This isn't going to be a cloud-only world. A lot of this stuff, for reasons of whether it be latency security or security and privacy, yeah. you're going to want to run that locally or power consumption. I mean, if this is going to be a battery-powered doorbell, it can't have a large exactly. server hanging off the back of it. So, exactly. yeah, it does allow a completely new range of applications in the world. Fantastic. So you talked about a piece of hardware that yeah. uh, engineers could use. That's right. Go, this, fire this away. This is it, yeah. So fire this away. is the uh, Hymax WiseEye 2 platform, and it's a uh, um, embedded on a Seed Studio development board that people can use here. And this is coupled with the carrier board and a touchscreen display. And this is currently doing pose detection in real time on the video. So you can see that the people in the background, it's sort of capturing their body pose using uh, an algorithm. And, uh, and the developers can develop directly for the Ethos U55 and the Cortex-M that is on this platform. And it's, it's available on the web from uh, Seed Studio. Just to be clear, that's the, that's the board. This that's is the, the dev board. board. This is just, just a, carrier a carrier for the screen. And this is a little resistive touch screen that you can use to sort of see the results Absolutely in real time. Absolutely fantastic. So, um, yeah. By the way, I would like to just mention, if you look at the underside of the board, uh, there's some really neat wiring. <laughs> yeah, this is really one of our, neat wiring. <laughs> uh, one of our uh, developer engineers that we have here at ARM put this together, and you can he, see he's he neatly wired. He's very, up, very passionate about his job. He is. He does a great that job. That is fantastic. For us. So that's running all on that tiny little microcontroller. All on that tiny little microcontroller in real time. In real time. And that's got that inference engine on it. It has, yep, absolutely. But it, in silicon, in not, silicon, not, 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 not wait for next year, not, not wait for next year, ready the current generation, today. ready for developers to play with today. Blimey, that is absolutely fantastic. So just before we wrap up this yeah, podcast, sure. I've got one more question for you. Yeah, okay. For the uh, for the viewers out there who are watching this video, if they want to get involved with ARM's inference engines, yeah. what would you recommend that they do? I think um, have a look at that Seed Studio HiMax platform. Uh, it uses the Ethos U55 or um, another another vendor, uh, Alif, have a developer board that's out there that allows you to experiment directly with the Ethos U55. And there are tools available from Edge Impulse or Keekso where you can actually develop your own ML algorithms and deploy them into embedded devices. That would be a good place to start. Fantastic. Well, thank you ever so much for Thanks being here today. Thanks very much. Really good to speak with you. You too. Thank you.